Hey everybody, welcome to this video, which is all about powerful communication. We're gonna be using something called the Mandel Triangle here. Now we normally teach this to hypnotists, right Mike? Yes we but do. But it actually applies equally, if not more, more, to everyday conversation. So let's dive into it. Chris is completely right. Hypnotists can do stellar work when they master this, but everyone should add this to their box of communication tools. What's important in communication? All right, and let's start with that. got to start with yeah. that. Confidence, obviously, is vitally important because confidence conveys certainty. We are automatically drawn to people who appear confident because they don't seem dickish. They seem like they know what they're doing and what they're saying. So how do you do this? I'm confident you're right, though, that it does oh, matter. Thank so, yeah. you, Chris. Not dickish at all. So we use the as-if frame. We mm. keep our emotions in check. And then we get to what? Congruence. So once you're confident, now we have to talk about congruence. And congruence really means something that conveys clarity. So a congruent person has decided. They have decided something. And they are sending a very clear message about whatever it is they have decided. Their body language, their internal dialogue, their beliefs, their vocal tone are all in line right. with that congruent body language and verbal That's tone right. that they bring A congruent forward. person is sending mm -hmm. only one message. You know, your body language and your vocal tone and your internal state, everything matches and congruence will build the confidence. I want to give you an example here. Uh, many years ago, we knew a guy who was a, a minister at a church and this guy was, he gave this message of weakness all mm -hmm. the time. It drove my wife crazy. He'd preach with his arms at his sides and he'd oh. talk like this. The oh, weird. we're all doomed and we're barely surviving. This is how he was actually in front of an audience. And he disappeared. Him and his wife went on vacation. And when he came back, he changed his image, his external image. He was preaching in a leather jacket now, and he'd grown a goatee, and he was trying to look tough. I mean, it was pretty obvious. And I thought, okay, so he goes up to the pulpit, and he says, we're all doomed, and it's off. And it's exactly the same. <laughs> so his, okay, so what you're saying is that he changed his outward external appearance, appearance, but he didn't change his external body language and tone and right. the way he, he presented wasn't himself. He congruent. He was sending multiple messages. So the external message is, oh, I'm this tough guy. You should okay. listen to me. But what he was sending with his body language and his vocal tone, instead of how he's dressed and looking, was the exact opposite. It was sending a, a, a message in of a way, he, weakness. So he made it worse because at yes. least in the beginning, he didn't come across as particularly confident. I know. And he also didn't come across as very congruent. Or, or let's say he was congruent, he was congruent about the weak. lack of confidence, the weakness. Weak. Yeah, yeah. And now he's incongruently, are, are you strong or are you still weak? Mm. And it will cause a rip. It'll cause a loss of rapport. It'll, exactly. It'll almost cause an impossibility to, to even get to rapport in right. the first People place. People just lose mm -hmm. confidence left, right, and center with it. So, so let's talk about the third side of the triangle, which we're about to introduce, which is called conviction, right? So conviction conveys intention. intention. In fact, we used to call it intention. Right, but, but we it, want them all to be seen. <laughs> right. So you're the kind of person who expects a certain outcome. Let's talk about that. What does that mean? Well, you're you're focusing your attention on something coming mm -hmm. to pass. Now, I don't mean that we're manipulating the universe in some sort of Zen way that's typically called quantum physics and isn't. But what, what the whole idea is that if we focus our attention on something, we align all our resources and we get a much more certain outcome by mm -hmm. doing that instead of an offhand attitude. Even Erickson yeah. used to say, you'll get more with your client with a focused attitude and an attentive one instead of an offhand one. This is not some woo-woo thing, right? Woo. If you go in with intention or conviction, then you're also going to be much more open and aware and ready to accept opportunities that will get you where you want, right? Right. So, so you're going and you're not going to take no for an answer, but you're not going to be a dick about it either. You really believe what you're saying. And when you are congruently projecting an image and doing it confidently and your conviction is lined up with it as well. This will draw people toward That's your message it. without any kind of pressure because you're you're not pulling. They're just moving to you on their own. That's a really good, yeah, when we were talking about this, that is a really nice metaphor that you're drawing people in on their own. They are drawing themselves towards like you you're based a magnet on pulling. Yeah, you. yeah that's yeah. a really good way. There, there's a magnetic force in a sense pulling people t towards you rather than this repulsion of oh, he's he looks like he's a tough guy, but yeah. he's presenting or, himself or like he's all guy, awkward he's and weak. Yeah, that's right. not good at all. No, okay, we can represent this how with well, what we call the Mandel triangle, yes. right? So, in fact, right now we'll put this on the screen for you here. So the Mandel Triangle, you got to imagine this being 
perhaps an equilateral triangle. So you've got confidence, congruence, and conviction, and those three work together. So if you work on any one area, you'll improve the others as well. The whole triangle gets If you gets become bigger. more confident, mm -hmm. naturally you'll be more congruent in your presentation, right. and also your conviction will grow, and right. any of them that you build will influence the others as well. Now, we're gonna talk about using the 80-20 principle, Pareto's principle here, to pick the one area that you think you have the most opportunity to improve on, but before we do that, let's throw that C in the center of the triangle because right. that is for what? This is for calibration. Mm -hmm. We say ABC always be calibrating. If you're not calibrating what is happening, if you're not noticing what results you are getting, what shifts the other person is going through as you send your communications out, you're going to be failing. So you must be calibrating as you use the three sides of this congruent triangle or this equilateral right. triangle. Okay, so you're going to be looking at this triangle and you're going to be thinking to yourself, which area do I have the most opportunity to improve? If you're already supremely confident in the way that you present yourself. Yeah, you don't have to work on that. <laughs> probably working on that isn't going to buy you much benefit, right? But if maybe you're not congruent or if people tell you, you know, I'm not really sure what you mean. You seem confident, but I don't really understand your message. Then of course, that would be a hint that congruence is something you want to work on. Right. And if you're not focused on a particular outcome, if you don't go in knowing what you want, then maybe it's how you know you got intention, right? <laughs> so those are yeah. the things you're going to work on to make yourself better at this. But let's talk about calibration and how to apply this. And I right. know you have a good example. I've got a great example mm -hmm. because when we're calibrating, when we're looking at the external uh, the external world, the people we're speaking to, mm -hmm. our individual we're speaking to, we have to be watching for shifts in their external behavior. If when you're talking, all of a sudden your audience is like this, or all of a sudden everybody in your audience has their iPhone, <laughs> chances are good you're not getting across mm -hmm. to them. But let me give you a great example of calibration. True story happened to a good friend of mine. This guy was an excellent trainer. He had just seen Tony Robbins lately and was modeling him with the energy, right. and all, which is great. That's fine. But he goes to present at a group of maybe 100, 150 elderly bank executives and people from a bank. And he's so on stage. He's obviously. on stage yeah. on a platform. See, he runs out there like Tony Robbins. Yeah. And he, how's everybody going, doing tonight? Let's hear everybody say, yeah, like this. And they're sort of and just looking bankers. at him. Yeah. And, and he said, come on, we're going to get wound up. We're going to get in gear. We're going to do. And they're just still looking at him. And he instantly calibrates this, calibrates what's happening. And he makes an instant shift. So he steps Away here, from I'll, the, give you some, I'll give you some give space some for it. Here we so go. here he is at the podium, and he suddenly steps away from it and goes, now don't you hate speakers like that? Which was freaking brilliant. So what he, and they all go, yeah. yeah. And he said, here's what we're going to be looking at today. He totally changed his presentation. He stepped outside the frame, pointed back at it. And as soon as he did that, he distanced himself mm -hmm. spatially from what he'd just done. as though that wasn't him at all. And he got great rapport with them, and I'm pretty sure did an amazing presentation. So he congruently showed up on stage. He confidently presented his message, and his yep. intention, his conviction was to get the audience really energized. Then he calibrated it wasn't working, and congruently and confidently turned it into more of a joke with the, oh, yes. oh don't you hate people when they do stuff yeah, like that? Don't you hate that mm -hmm. kind of speaker? And that was his way out. Now realize, even with all the power of the congruence, all the power of the confidence, all the power of the intention, the conviction behind it. Mm -hmm. If he had missed the center, which is the calibration that holds the triangle together, he wouldn't have realized he was bombing. Everyone I mean, would be talking about him up doing and great making kick. fun of him. That's right. So hopefully you can apply this to your life. Find ways that you can apply this. Think to yourself, congruence, confidence, conviction. Which one can I work on in a particular situation? Maybe pick a work situation, a relationship one of your own personal goals, whoever you're interacting with, and pick the side of that triangle that you think will give you the maximum benefit when you improve it. The biggest payback. And always mm -hmm. be calibrating. Always be that calibrating. Way you're going to know whether or not it's working. And while you're here, you may as well check out the link in the description under this video. You'll see our personal growth membership, which is a collection of awesome courses that give you way more material just like this to change your life. And then I'll go ahead and click that subscribe button. to do it. Click that subscribe button. Ring the bell that pops up on YouTube after, you'll always be notified of our videos. I am Chris Thompson. I'm Mike Mandel. And we are Mike Mandel Hypnosis. See you in the next video. Thanks, Thanks again, again and good, good night. night.